I'm Dr. Barry Ginsberg, and this is Candace, who has so kindly volunteered to be the subject for this first part of my series on uh, what makes someone beautiful and what treatments can we use to help enhance uh, their appearance. When we look at Candace, it's, it's, everybody would agree this is a very attractive woman. But if, if someone comes to me and they're, they're asking for cosmetic enhancement, I need to be able to, to know why, what makes someone pretty and what I can do to help improve their appearance. So when we look at Candace, a very young, pretty face, we look at the shape of the face. One of the things that a useful face has is a, is a heart shape. A heart shape has a very nice temple, beautiful long cheekbones, very sharp angle to the jaw, beautifully proportioned lips. You know, when we look at a lip, we like to see the size of the lip. Generally speaking, the proportion of a lip is the upper lip is about um, uh, half the size to one third of the size of the lower lip. And her lips are very well proportioned. We look at the various angles of her lip. The, we call this the philtrum, the cupid's bow, very nice sharp angles. So when someone comes to me and they say, you know, what treatments can you do to help me uh, look younger? What I'll do is I'll analyze their face and see, you know, wh wh what's lacking? What are the areas uh, that have made them look older? One of the things that people don't realize is what happens to make someone look older. Uh, if you consider a, the young face as a youthful, full balloon, it's all blown up, it's, 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 it's tight, and it's, uh, and it's very good looking. As we get older, this balloon deflates. How does it deflate? Number one is we actually lose bone. If you took a picture of an adult skull, uh, someone in their 50s and 60s versus a young skull, skull you would actually see diminished bone, diminished mandible, uh, changes around the eye socket. So one of the things that happens is we lose bone. The other thing is we lose fat. You know, when we lose bone and we lose fat, this very tight balloon loses volume and what happens is the bottom falls out. So, so people develop a jowling. When we have a jowl, two things happen. One is from the loss of the volume of the temple, we get narrowing of the top third of the head and we get widening of the bottom third of the head. So what used to be this heart shape becomes an upside down heart shape. So what can we do to correct that? Uh, generally speaking, when uh, one of the main uh, parts of cosmetic treatment is the use of fillers. Fillers are materials that we inject to enhance volume and there are very, various different fillers available. Some contain hyaluronic acid, uh, others are collagen stimulators. I'm not going to go into the specifics of what fillers I use in this segment. I'm just going to uh, just generally speak in terms of where we put fillers in order to improve the appearance. So when we see, when we see a, a recessed temple what I like to do is restore the volume of the temple, so instead of curving in this way, it has this very nice sweeping curve from the cheekbones. So that's one of the first areas that I look at when I'm trying to make someone look younger. The other is the shape of the cheekbones. What happens is we get, as we get older, we get central facial atrophy. We lose volume in the cheekbones and we lose volume through here. When that happens is not only does that cause further falling of the lower face, but it also is just unattractive in its own way. You see a very nice rounding as a, as a nose sweeps into a cheekbone and up into a temple. So when I'm looking at a face, if I see flattening through here, that's one of the places I could put a filler. I might use Restylane or Radius or Artifil, but what I'll do is re-establish re that round configuration here. Same thing with the temples, uh, with the cheekbones, I'm sorry. If we see flattening of the cheekbones, I actually can put fillers onto the bone in the cheekbone and reestablish this natural youthful shape to the cheekbones. What happens when we lose the volume here, it causes a deepening of the nasolabial fold. So when come, someone comes in and they have a very deep nasolabial fold, we have two choices. One is I can directly inject the nasolabial fold to make it more youthful and flat like Candace has. The other is by filling the area laterally, it will pull open the nasolabial fold. That's a very much more natural way of achieving the same result. Ideally, someone would want to do both, but some, you know, personal preference, cost uh, will come into play in that, in that sort of situation. Uh, for the angle of the jaw. Another thing that happens as our mouth becomes smaller, a lot of people will see a dipping in. If 
you look at someone's chin, it, it, it narrows. That's from the loss of bone and fat. By, a re, by injecting fillers right along the mandible, number one is we reach, reestablish that straight line of the cheekbone, of the jawbone. And what that does is it not only looks prettier because it's a nicely shaped jaw and, and it's less pointed, but by pulling here, we actually give a little lifting of the neck. Because as, as our face falls, we get loosening of the tissue in the neck. So those are some of the main areas that we address. The other, when we look at the upper face, when, when we lose volume and, and elasticity of the skin in the upper face, we will see our eyebrows might come down a little bit. She has very nice shaped eyebrows. The position of a female eyebrow is right a little bit higher than the, than the orbital bone. In men, eyebrows tend to be a little bit lower. That's what some, helps some uh, people look more masculine or more feminine. So when I'm looking at the eyebrows and the brow, one thing I look at is the smoothness. The youthful uh, forehead has absolutely no lines. So if someone comes in and they have lines across the forehead, the best way of addressing that is to relax the muscles that cause the lines. That I can do with botulism toxin. And there are two main uh, varieties of botulism toxin, Dysport and Botox. They're virtually the same uh, material, just by made by different companies. The other characteristic of the forehead that can be uh, unattractive is what some people call the 11s, the frown lines. When we frown, frown, okay, we see little lines form here. As we get older, those lines can become permanent, so that actually at rest, you, all, you have a frown line. This might not be unattractive, but it makes people think you're angry. And it, the, the, so it's important how you present yourself to someone. If you look angry or you look unhappy, someone will approach you in a different way than if you look smiley uh, and happy. So if someone comes in with the 11s with a frown line at rest, what I will do is I will relax the muscles that cause the frown line. These muscles here, when they contract, they move that and down. So by injecting botulism toxin in the form of Dysport, I would prevent these muscles from making the frown. Since those muscles aren't used for anything else except frowning, the only effect is you, you won't show a frown when you're angry. Uh, so we've addressed the horizontal lines and the vertical lines with this port. One of the un unintended positive consequences of injecting these lines is as we weaken the muscles in the central forehead, the lateral forehead muscles tend to overcompensate. So we we usually get a little elevation of the lateral eyebrows, which as we get older, the weakening of the lateral uh, temporal muscles causes a dropping of the lateral eyebrows. So that's a very positive effect. It gives a more female arch to the lateral eyebrow. There are other ways of enhancing the eyebrow by putting a teeny little bit of filler right on the orbital bone under the eyebrow. And what that does is it gives a little lift. And it gives a very little attractive, this, see she has this very little this beautiful little oval shape here. That can be achieved as we get older, we lose that here. So by injecting a little filler right here, we not only achieve a little raising of the lateral eyebrow, but we also get that little pretty oval that's uh, in the lateral eyebrow. Um, I think that pretty much goes over uh, what I try to achieve uh, as far as the shape of the face to make a face look more youthful. So thank you very much.